On this morning of Christmas Eve, I bid you a very warm welcome on this snowy Sunday morning, just in time to have a white Christmas. Welcome, whoever you are, whatever you have come from, whatever you are seeking, I pray that you find what you're seeking to fill your heart with joy and with peace and with love this Christmas Eve and through this Christmas season. I bid you welcome with these words. May the Lord be with you.
On this eve of Christmas, we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We join with the people throughout the world to watch and wait for the coming of the Prince of Peace. When Jesus was born, the angels sang of peace on earth and goodwill to all people. Let us commit our lives to working for peace on earth, and may we be generous in showing goodwill to all. Dear God, Hear this, our prayer, on Christmas Eve.
Sometimes the world is so dark that it's hard to light the candles that they might shine in the darkness, but light them we do. And the light of Christ is resilient and the darkness will not overcome it. Please be seated. And let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this special day, a day when the snow quietly falls, and we remember your quiet, silent coming into this world in the very form of Jesus Christ, entering this world as we all enter it, vulnerable, frail, dependent on others. God, as we gather in this place today, bless our singing, bless our praying, bless our thinking and our reflecting. Bless us, God, as your people, united with people throughout the world today, standing on the threshold of another Christmas day, watching and waiting for that day when peace will come, when our hopes will be fulfilled, and when love, love will reign supreme. So God bless this time we share to together in worship, for we ask this in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and all of God's people said, Amen. Good morning, and a very warm welcome into God's house on this Christmas Eve morning. Um, you are indeed very welcome here, whoever you are, wherever you've come from, it's lovely to see you. There will be further fellowship through, uh, through this door here in Irman Hall. Everyone is most welcome to come through for some drinks and some cookies and, and just to meet with one another and to visit. Um, if you are not going to be at this evening service, there will be an evening service tonight as normal for Christmas Eve at 6.30. We will have um, our, our candles lit at that time. Um, there will also be communion, and whoever you are, again, you're welcome. Everyone is always welcome in this place that in the midst of a world where there is a lot of turmoil and chaos, this is sanctuary, and I hope you find here today peace and sanctuary. If you're able to make it at 6.30 tonight, it would be lovely to see you. If you're not able to come tonight and you wish, wish to take your Christ, Christmas, my goodness, that's a hard word to say, Christmas poncetta. If, um, if you want to take that today, please, this morning, please do. Um, George is going to rearrange them so that they still looks, look nice for this evening's worship. So once again, I bid, bid each and every one of you a very warm welcome. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Are you excited? <laughs> I'm excited. All the hustle and the bustle and the presents and the wrapping and the lights and the tree and the candles and the cookies and the chocolate. And that's what the kids are excited about too. But we mustn't forget that just like every other Sunday, we come here today to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ who God sent to us to tell us the good news that God loves us, period. Amen. Will you join me in our confession? God of new beginnings, you came into this world to offer us new life and life eternal. Hear our praise and prayers this Christmas Eve. Speak to us through the familiar carols and fill our hearts with joy and peace of this season. Remind us that Jesus came to such a world as this, a world that is far from perfect, but a world that is loved by you. May Jesus be born in each of us this day so that we know your forgiveness and be filled with your joy and assured by your everlasting love. May the celebrations of this day inspire us anew to follow in the way of Jesus, whose birth is, as always, good news to us all. Amen.
Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. be seated and let us pray. God, we give you thanks this day that you have given to us everything. You have given to us life. You have given to us a beautiful world in which to live. You have given us one another as we celebrate this Christmas season with family and friends. We thank you, God, for the gift of love given and received. We thank you for the gifts that will be exchanged later today and tomorrow. And as we give and receive, may, may we remember that you first gave to us. You gave us love. And you gave us the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And you, through Jesus, we are assured that we are loved and we are forgiven. So God, speak into our lives today your word of love. Speak now through the music as we listen to music that's familiar, to music that's new, to music that speaks into our souls and stirs our spirits and raises our thoughts toward heaven and how heaven came to earth this night. Amen.
I'm exhausted, and I was just sitting. <laughs> Whoa, that was a lot of energy. <laughs> Thank you. It was indeed the many moods of Christmas, the many different pieces of music that, that sort of come together to sing the hallelujahs of Christ born in Bethlehem. We change the mood just a little bit to hear the story as it was first told by St. Matthew. We read from Scripture, Matthew chapter 1, and reading from verses 18 to 25. I know that you have heard this story many, many times before, but come this day with open hearts and open minds to hear again how the birth of the Savior took place. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when Joseph had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Amen. And thanks indeed be to God for this gift of love, God with us. sing a carol, every creature high or low, come and praise the King of Heaven by whatever name you know. When the King of all creation had a cradle on
So, um, hands up if you've got your decorations up yet. <laughs> hands up if you prefer to leave putting your decorations up until Christmas Eve, Steve Simpson. <laughs> so, how, hands up who put their decorations up immediately after Thanksgiving. Oh, my goodness. Oh, too long, too long. I like to put my decorations up a little bit closer to Christmas. I'm slightly a purist that way. I like to feel that, you know, we get through Advent, and then closer to Christmas, the decorations go up. So, I, what I want to ask you this morning is, what is your favorite Christmas decoration? What's the favorite thing that you take out every year and you either put on the tree or you put in the house or what's just that thing that really, I don't know, really speaks to your heart? Evelyn. Evelyn got a nativity this year, which is really beautiful. And Lucas is going to, is he going to tell me the same thing? Lucas, ornaments. Any particular ornaments that you really like? No? You just like all the ornaments that remind you of, of Christmas. I bet there's a, is there a Santa in there? You can't remember. <gasps> oh, it's, oh, he put most of them up. He did a good job watching them, yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Lucas, the Alambreras house is decorated ahead of time. Well done, Lucas. <laughs> Any other decorations that you take out that, Ellen? Mm hmm. Yeah, hands up who likes angels. Yeah, why? Why do we like angels? Because they're sweet. Aww. One, two, three. Aww. <laughs> what other decorations do you like? You don't have any special decorations that you put up? No? Let's see. Yeah? So when you see this Santa, it takes you back to where you were when you, you bought it. Yeah. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> so um, hands up if you have a special decoration. You don't need to tell me what it is, but just if there's something you have that's really special that maybe goes back to your childhood or maybe it goes back to parents or grandparents. Yeah? My goodness, you're a hard congregation this morning. <laughs> this is hard work. So, I want to show you what my, this isn't, this particular one isn't my favorite, but this is one of my favorite decorations to bring out at Christmas. What's this? A snow globe. You don't even need to be inside looking at a snow globe. You could be outside enjoying it at the moment, apparently. But uh, this is, believe you me, this is the snow that I prefer. In a globe, <laughs> contained, not on the pavements, not on the roads. Do you have any idea why I particularly like snow globes? I don't have to shovel the snow, that's true. <laughs> Actually, what I like is if I just put it down. I like the fact that the snow, when you shake it, is moving around. There's a kind of chaos to it. And then if you wait and you watch, everything settles and peace descends. See, I think the snow globe has something to say about our world. When I look out, it looks like everything is in chaos. Everything has been just a little bit shook up this year, these last years, has it not? Do you feel that the world is shaking a little bit and when you look out, there's an element of just chaos. I have been totally stunned um, as I've done some Christmas shopping, almost to a person, the servers in the shops have wanted to speak to me about their fears for the world and their sense of our living through chaotic times of turmoil and upheaval. Stranger speaking to stranger, 
When I'm in these shops, I don't have a clerical collar around my neck. People don't know if I'm the pastor. It's just this yearning of one person to another, sharing and saying, what on earth is happening? I look at the snow globe, and when the snow is careering around here, I think it is symbolic of the turmoil outside and within in our lives. And on the verge of Christmas Day, we are waiting for the peace to really descend, for peace to really come to our world. And I am uplifted, and I am encouraged, and I am inspired by the fact that there are more people who want that peace than who want the turmoil and the upheaval and the hatred. What would it look like for peace to descend? One last question for you, hands up if you would like to find or be given for Christmas the gift of peace. Look around you. We are in the, ma the majority. We are in the majority. We want peace. I came across this story several weeks ago, and I want to share it with you this morning, because for me, this is an image of what it would look like, something of an image of what it would look like for peace to descend on earth. I want you to think of a Chinese restaurant in Houston, Texas. That's not what peace looks like, by the way. <laughs> but there's something that happens in that Chinese restaurant. This story goes back a number of years, and it's um, a story about a Russian rabbi, a Jew, who was on an exchange program in Houston, Texas. And the family with whom he was staying wanted to show him all the highlights of Houston and wanted to make sure he got a really, really good impression of the United States of America. And one night, the family took the old Jewish rabbi out for a meal in one of the finest restaurants in Houston. And it was a Chinese restaurant. They had a wonderful time together. This Christian family, this Jewish rabbi from Russia. And at the end of the meal, the server came over and gave the family the bill, some fortune cookies, and a small metal Christmas tree. The rabbi looked at the Christmas tree and he turned upside down and he showed it around the table and they all started to laugh because on the bottom of it, it said, made in India. <laughs> and as they laughed and as they talked around that table, the family suddenly noticed that the old rabbi was sitting with tears streaming down his eyes. And the family thought, oops, we've offended him. And so they asked the rabbi what was wrong and the rabbi said, my tears are tears of joy, complete and utter joy. What a wonderful country you have here, for here I am, a Russian rabbi, Jewish, being served by a Buddhist in a Chinese restaurant and given a Christmas tree that was made by a Hindu and he said, what a wonderful country. What a wonderful country this can be. When people from every race and every creed and every culture can sit round a table and share together at peace one with the other. It was down to this world that Jesus Christ came to assure this world that whoever you are, whatever your beliefs, however you understand God, God is love. And God is with us. May that message be in your hearts and in your homes and in this nation and in this world, not just on this Christmas Eve, but into all our tomorrows. God is with us and loves us all. 
Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Would you greet one another in peace? Thank you. Oh, I don't know how to get back to that. <laughs> we sing our song of response, which is number 29. Go tell it on the mountain, if anyone's listening. The ushers, please uplift the offering.
Please be seated. And let us pray. Dear God, we pray that peace would indeed descend, the peace that is the peace of Jesus Christ, the peace that is shared between people, the peace that he gives into our hearts and into our lives. This Christmas Eve, we pray for peace on earth, for an end to all conflict and turmoil, for an end to all hatred and division, all war and all bitterness. We pray, God, that peace would indeed descend. And we pray, God, for families gathered around tables, sharing food, sharing fellowship, sharing faith. Bless our gathering with others. And remind us, God, that your Son is the reason for this season, that we give because you first gave to us. So, God, give to us again, we pray, the assurance of your love, the peace of your forgiveness, and the hope of our faith. Bless, we pray, all who have no home in which to live at this Christmas time. Bless those who walk the streets lonely and hungry. Enable us in some way to turn our prayers into action, that the day will come when goodwill will be shared between all people, and everyone will live free from want and poverty and injustice. God, hear these our prayers. And hear us as together we say the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat>
May you go into the world to celebrate this Christmas Eve and to prepare once again to receive the greatest gift that God has ever given, the gift of God with us, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ. And as you go, may you know the peace and the love and the joy and the hope of Christmas. And may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and rest and remain with you and with those whom you love today and forevermore. Amen. As we watch the dead of night, there appeared a wondrous light, angels singing peace on earth, told us of the Savior's birth, hail that ever-blessed morn, hail redemption's happy Our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.